Hey guys and welcome back to a new KMM video caught on multi-platform mobile in which I will lead you through the initial project or basically the blank project that Android Studio will create for you when you create a new KMM project. Because as you can see this is quite more than what you get if you just create a blank Android project without KMM so without the iOS app we don't have the shared module here in a normal Android app. So I will walk you through this, tell you in which folders you should put which classes, how you can actually share code between Android and iOS, and just how all this is um, arranged and structured. Now I want to start with the simplest module, which is the Android app module. So that is nothing else than what we Android developers at least are already used to. If we open this up, we will see our Android manifest, which will look very familiar to Android developers. Here you will put your permissions, all your activities, services, and things like that. We have a normal resource package, which is also nothing new. You could also, of course, include more resources. And in the Java package, we will see our source code. In this case, we will see our main activity. So what kind of code should you now put inside of this Android app module? In the end, all the code that is specific to Android and that does not need to be implemented on iOS goes inside of this module. So what does that mean? For example, things like activities. iOS doesn't know the concept of activities. That's really only an Android thing. So that is why the main activity would go inside of this Android app module. And the same way that would work for, um, for example, implementing the UI, if you would be using XML, which is the default for uh, KMM projects, then this your layout, layouts would go in RAS layout, just as usual for XML layouts. But on the other side, if we will actually use Compose, which we will later do in my KMM videos, then this would also be the place where you would just implement your Compose specific layouts, because that is very Android specific and needs to be done separately for each platform. Or another example would be if you implement a service, for example, or a broadcast receiver, like broadcasts are a concept that are um, specific to the Android operating system. Those don't exist on iOS in that format. So if you have such a broadcast receiver, then that would need to go inside of this Android app module here. So that Android app module should now be pretty clear, I think. Um, of course, we also have the built-out Gradle file here, which should be nothing new to you. It uses the Kotlin DSL version of Gradle, so the Kotlin style uh, Gradle, you can say, not Gradle Groovy. But yeah, it just the syntax differs a little bit to Grail Groovy, which we um, at least right now have as the default for plain Android projects. And here, if you need some dependencies that are only needed for Android, then you could put these in here. For example, if you use Compose, then you would need to put some Compose dependencies in here. So you can actually access these Compose classes and UI components in your activity, in your other component files and things like that. So that's really nothing new here in the Android app module. And also if we take a look at the root files that we see here in our project, then that also looks very familiar. We do have another built up Gradle file here, which is just the project file, which just contains the project relevant Gradle configuration such as dependencies, for example, in form of a class path, where you could also include uh, specific Gradle plugins, for example. We could change the Kotlin version here for the um, Kotlin Gradle plugin and things like that. Then we, of course, have the iOS app directory, which we've already seen a little bit in the last video, at least in the first video where we created this project here. And that is actually the only directory here that you can't directly um, Added in Android Studio, like at least you won't get all the support in from, uh, like you get in Xcode that you have code completion. You you basically need to open this in Xcode to just properly code your iOS app. You would then need to open this Xcode project, which you've seen in the last video, and then in Xcode you basically have the equivalent to the Android app module, just that here you would be only putting the iOS specific code that is not relevant for the Android platform. However, what is now the most interesting part and maybe the um, hardest to understand if you're new to KMM is this shared module. If we open this up, then we see another builder Gradle file and we see a source directory. Let's open this one first and we see three more modules. So basically three sub modules here for our shared module. Android main, common main and iOS main. So what the heck are these now used for? If we first of all take a look in common main, then this will be the module that will contain all the shared code 
that has no platform specific aspect to it. So imagine you would be writing a class that simply validates if the user entered a valid password, like if it has at least, let's say nine characters, if it contains a digit, if it contains an uppercase letter, then that would be business logic that is not really specific to Android or iOS. Both these platforms can actually make use of the same validation logic. So such logic would actually go inside of this common main directory or module, since that will then be directly shared between the Android app and the iOS app. So both these apps can directly share, uh, can di directly access the classes we actually define in common main. And we also already see this here with this greeting class if we open this up. Uh, that is what we saw in the previous video, which we basically accessed in our main activity here. So you can see we can access this in Android and we can also access this in iOS. So we also saw that when we opened uh, our Xcode project that there was also a class called greeting and that comes from this single module here. So we only need to define this greeting class once in this module and we can then use that on both of our platforms. So why do we now need this Android main and this iOS main module? What, is, what are the differences between these? And you can already see that both these modules actually also use Kotlin code. So the iOS main one doesn't use Swift or so and the Android one of course also uses Kotlin. That is no surprise here. So the difference now is between common main and Android main or iOS main is that in these two modules, we now put classes that should be shared between Android and iOS, but that differ a little bit on each platform. So in the end, if we take a look at this greeting class uh, that simply returns the current platform we're running on. So on Android, that would be API level 28 and on iOS, that would be iOS 15.5. So getting that value of that current version of the operating system is of course something that's specific to each platform. However, the string that we display can easily be shared between each platform because it's in the end just a string that we create here in this greeting class. And if we now take a look in this platform class to actually see how we retrieve this platform, like this version the operating system runs on, which Android and iOS run on. If we take a look here, then we see something new. So that is quite a new Kotlin syntax that we don't know yet from pure Android development since we see a new keyword here, which is expect. So we have an expect class platform and we specify the platform here. The structure of this reminds uh, pretty much of an abstract class. So this could also be an abstract class. Here we would have an abstract val, which we don't need to directly implement. However, it works a little bit different here that we have this expect class. That is actually a, a concept that is specific to KMM. Expect actually comes with uh, the counterpart, which is called actual. So in here, in our common main directory or module, we actually are able now to create these expect classes to say, hey, both platforms are actually expected to have this platform value. So on Android, again, it would be the API level uh, the phone is running on and on iOS, it would be the iOS version, but that's specific to each platform. But still both platforms have this value that can be shared. And the counterpart to this would be inside of our Android main and iOS main modules, there we have another class platform. So as soon as we declare a, cl a class here as expect, it basically forces us to have actual implementations of that class in both the Android main and iOS main module. So if we take a look in Android main and the platform class here, we see that here we have an actual class. So that is again the counterpart. We have an actual constructor and an actual platform. So here we now need to provide an Android specific implementation of how we retrieve this platform version on Android. And on Android, that might not be new to you. We simply do this with um, build that version SDK int. But on iOS, we of course don't have this Android OS um, build version SDK int. Uh, there, we use another command to actually retrieve the iOS version, which we see here in our iOS main platform file. And on iOS, it's actually that way how we access that. So with expect, we can basically just define, hey, we want to have this behavior on both platforms, but each platform actually um, has their individual way of retrieving that behavior or that specific constant string or whatever you're implementing. You could also see that if we actually go to one of these Android main or iOS main modules and we would be commenting out this class and we then go to common main platform, we'll get an error because it will tell us um, expected class platform has no actual declaration in our shared main 
module, so in the Android main module here actually. So it properly detects that there needs to be an actual implementation for the Android world, which we currently don't have. And as soon as we provide this here with this syntax, then the error will again go away. And as a last thing, I want to show you how we can actually include libraries in our shared code, which is of course very important and a common thing we want to do. And for that, let's just collapse our modules here. We want to go to this build.gradle.kts file inside of our shared module. So that's just a normal Gradle file that will look different from what you're used to in Android. But here we can also normally just include dependencies as you can see here. So here we have a lot of different source sets. A source set would be just something like um, your test directory, your main directory for your actual, um, actual code base. And for iOS, we have a lot more here depending on the CPU architecture. But what we are actually interested in is this common main, Android main, and yeah, that's pretty much it here for this Gradle file. So common main and Android main are relevant. If we take a look here in common main and we actually want to add a dependency right here, then we also specify the dependencies block. And in there, I will just paste two sample dependencies here on the one hand for retrofit, on the other hand for our Kato client. Both are libraries that I use to actually make API calls. So just normal HTTP requests. If we now synchronize this, then I want to show you something interesting. So you can see we didn't get any errors here. Both dependencies were included successfully. If we now go to our common main, which is actually the module for which we included these dependencies. And let's say we create a new class here called, I don't know, API or so, doesn't matter. And in here, we would want to actually create an instance of our API. Let's try to do that with retrofit. So here we use that retrofit is equal to, and normally we do this with retrofit.builder, but you can see we, there is no retrofit dependency. It doesn't auto complete that, even though we actually included the, the dependency. If we do this with our Kato client, um, we do this with, I think the HTTP client, you can see we get access to the um, HTTP dependency of our Kato client even though we included both the dependencies for Retrofit and Kato Client. And that is an important thing about KMM. The shared code section only works with pure Kotlin libraries. Kato is a pure Kotlin library, Retrofit is not. So we can't use Retrofit here in the common main directory. In the same way, we wouldn't be able to use something, um, yeah, in another kind of Java library here. However, we can use Kotlin libraries in the shared module, in the, in the common main, I mean. However, what is now interesting is if we go to Android main and we also create this API class here, like this. And in here we say val retrofit. Here we suddenly get access to retrofit because now we are in that Android specific module, which basically just, yeah, which is basically just used to have an Android specific implementation of something. And since this will only run on Android, we can also use Java libraries for that part. But in this case, we would of course need to also provide a specific implementation of how we can make an API call for the iOS side. So we basically need to write two functions for one API call. And that's of course not ideal. So you should always aim to actually share as much code as possible. And since we do have things like the Kato client to make HTTP calls, we can simply use that for a product and just define how it should make these API calls once in our common main directory. But what I wanted to show you is that things like Java libraries here with retrofit don't work at least in this common main directory that's shared between Android and iOS. But that just doesn't mean that if you have a Java library you really want to use for Android that you can't use that in a KMM project. But in that case, you of course need to provide an iOS implementation for that specific use case which the library solves. So you actually need to um, write two pieces of code to actually solve the same problem. So I hope this gave you a good impression of how a KMM project is actually structured. In the next video, I don't know yet what I will make it about. Maybe I will make it about actually including iOS dependencies. That is something I haven't covered yet here, which is a bit more complex. So just iOS specific dependencies that we only use in Swift in Xcode. Or if I already start to build a simple app that just doesn't need any dependencies. Let me know that down below what you actually want to see and then I will think about it what makes more sense. See you back in the next video. Enjoy your week. Bye bye.